Hello, I'm Greg Lamb with the Sleater Group. This is part two of my review of Sage One Accounting. In this video, I'll talk about invoicing, billing, payments, getting data in and out, reports, sales taxes, accountant features, and finish up with my recommendation. Let's pop on over to sales. Like the banking page, you'll see a list of transactions where the filter is set to only see transactions from the last 30 days or so. I would have preferred a default view shown all transactions and more than 10 per page. Let's now take a look at creating a new invoice. First, you choose a customer, which will populate the address fields. A good chunk of the screen is used on addresses, perhaps a carryover from the day when most invoices were physically mailed. Something I found a bit peculiar was having a search box for products and services, as well as specific buttons for creating products and services. If you search for and select a service, it'll fill out the form below. I don't really see why this product service search box couldn't be where the item code box is because that's really what you're doing. You're choosing an item. And there's really no need for a create product and create service button since when you type in a name, you'll be given the option to create one. So I think the user interface for invoices could be tightened up a bit. I find the naming used for certain fields to be a bit accounting -y. And yes, I know accounting -y is not a word. But software at this level is usually geared towards the small business owner. So a term like item code would be something like product or service, or simply item. And with ledger account, you can just drop the ledger and just simply name it account. Now, when choosing the ledger account, this is where I would like to have some accounting -y control, in that I would love if the software would let me choose more than only income accounts. Doing so would provide more flexibility in crafting invoices. All in all, none of these minor gripes are deal breakers, but they are things I think could be tweaked for the better. What I do like is that tax rates can be used on a line by line basis, and it's very easy to adjust the total tax amount if needed. Most people won't need to, but it's nice to have that flexibility. Once you've filled out the invoice form, you can save and send it, which means email it to your customer. If you've set up online payments, you can choose to allow your customer to do so. You need to fill out the email message each time as there's no default message that you can have. I have a bit of an issue with how the actual email looks to the customer as it comes from a do not reply at sage1.com email address. This makes it so the customer can't easily reply to the email if they have any issues. The actual invoice itself looks all right. Nothing sexy, but it's professional. I would however like it if the pay button were a little more obvious. So when you do click on credit card to pay, the payment screen seems to go back about a decade in interface design for some reason. Payment online does work though, so that's the important thing. And there's two payment processors you can use. The first is Sage Payments, and the second is via PayPal. Now let me go back to the sales page. Besides standard invoices, quotes and credit notes can be created, as well as draft invoices be saved. That's a good set of functionality for micro business software. A feature that puzzles me a bit is quick entries. I'll go and create a quick entry. At first I thought this was a way to enter paid invoices or using different terminology, sales receipts. But no, like the description says, quick entries is used to quickly record a batch of sales invoices, which are unpaid customer invoices. I don't think I've quite seen a feature like this before, so I'm a bit unsure of what to make of it. Since these are unpaid invoices, you'll still need to take an additional step in paying the invoices. What may be more useful is if I go back to the quick entries page, you'll see that I can import quick entries. I can see this coming in handy, although I think they would be more useful if more than one line item can be used on an invoice at a time. Now if I pop on over to expenses, there's not much to show you since the functionality is largely a mirror image of what we just looked at with the sales page. What I would like to show you though is the contacts pages. If you go and create a new customer, you'll see that you can set a default sales ledger account, tax rate, and customized payment terms. For vendor contacts, you can also choose a default expense ledger account and customized payment terms. What I like about the contact profiles is that you can see a list of all transactions below. And like most tables found in Sage One, you can click on any transaction to drill down into it further. Products and services also have some good settings. For example, you can create different price points for any product. You also have control over whether to use a customer's default tax rate or choose one to associate with the product. 
The settings you can choose for contacts and products and services are a step above other micro business software. On to reporting. Sage One has all the basic reports that a micro business would need, but what sets it apart is its cash flow reports. The cash flow forecast shows you how much money you can expect your business to have for a certain period of time, as in, will you have enough money in the bank next month to stay afloat? If you click on detailed breakdown, this will give you a good view of all the transactions that are taking cash out and putting cash into your business. Another interesting report is the profit analysis report. If you've sold products that have a cost associated with them, you'll be able to see how profitable each invoice was. Besides an analysis of profits based on products, you're also able to set up analysis types by going to settings. As you can see, you can choose to analyze by department, cost center or project, and use this on sales, expense, bank and journal transactions. You don't see this type of feature normally in micro business software, so this is a bonus. The last report I'll show you is the sales tax report. It'll show you a summary of what you owe for each tax, but you're also able to get a full breakdown. Overall, I like how Sage One handles sales tax, as there's a good amount of options given around how you want to charge taxes based on customer profiles, specific products or services, or even a manually entered rate. It would be nice if there were some sort of sales tax center that would let you easily pay the figures found in this report though. Now let me quickly talk about getting data in and out, as well as add-ons. Well, at this point in time, there's few ways to get data in and out, and there's virtually no add-ons beyond the ones involved in payments. You have to move up to small business software to get more options in these areas. For the accountant, Sage One provides a single login, a certification system, and a discount for clients. Like other micro business software, there's not much more accountant specific functionality than that. On the mobile front, I can't review the mobile app at the moment as it's been reconfigured to work with the new version of Sage One, but I'm told it will be available shortly. So after all this, what do I think about Sage One Accounting? It's an all right piece of online accounting software for micro business. If the banking page were improved to address some of the matching issues I addressed in the first part of this video review, I'd probably upgrade that diagnosis to good software. If all the little things I've mentioned throughout the entire review were improved, I think Sage One could fall into the territory of great. The price point of Sage One is quite intriguing, as it's free for up to five invoices a month and one connected bank account. After that, you have to upgrade to a premium subscription, which is $10 a month or under, depending on when you're watching this video. At these price points, it's hard to get hung up on the product's shortfalls. For the price of the product, it can do a lot. If you're willing to pay two to four times the price, you can move up into small business online accounting software, which will get you things like better bank reconciliation features, basic inventory, more automation, and access to add-ons that can expand functionality. I'm really glad that the US version of Sage One Accounting is now using the same code base as the UK, as this iteration is so much better than the previous one. If you're a professional services business, this is a viable choice. All right, that's it for this review. For more videos like this, please subscribe to the Sleater Group YouTube channel. I'm Greg Lamb with the Sleater Group, and I'll catch you on the flip side.